Welcome everyone to this session about data processing. So we are going to be um, talking about where Apache Bean is coming from. So where all these data processing systems are coming from, how they evolve, and, and how Apache Bean is new and different. Here we see all the papers coming from Google research about the data processing, from the first ones about the Google file system, MapReduce, and other data technologies, ending up in Apache Bean uh, that uh, was born in 2015. All these technologies um, that were published as papers were also implemented as open source, not by Google, but by others, like Hadoop, for instance, was done by Yahoo. All these uh, papers, as, as I was saying, were implemented as open source uh, processing systems, and they these systems became very popular. The fundamentals that uh, are behind these systems and behind these papers are actually still valid for how Apache Bean works on top of uh, different runners. So let's start talking about MapReduce and Hadoop. MapReduce was an innovation that uh, was born 20 years ago, um, and that um, introduced um, a simplification of data processing by assuming that users had to write only two functions, a map and a reduce, and then the system would take care of all the parallelization and all of the shuffling of the data as it was required, depending on the kind of calculations that were made. So as we see here in this slide, let me see if I can put here the pointer. So these are the inputs. The system, through the so-called Hadoop file systems, would take care of splitting the data in different chunks that were small enough to be processed by each one of these functions. This was done automatically. You didn't have to do this. And this was already an innovation. So the map function was executed for each one of these elements. The output was another element that it was transformed with a key. So here we have these key values. And then the system shuffled the data to make sure that each one of the reducers got all the elements with the same key. Again, users didn't have to worry about the shuffling. This was done automatically by, by Hadoop. And then the reduction was done and the final calculation was ready. With this, there were lots of uh, complex calculations that could be done very quickly in a cluster with um, affordable computers like regular PCs. So this was really an innovation compared to the large scale data processing technologies that were available before Hadoop and before MapReduce. However, this was still a, bit li a little bit limited because here you could just express one function for Map and one for Reduce. If you needed to do something more complex, you couldn't just with one job. So you had to do complex jobs, complex pipelines with um, chaining uh, several jobs together. By doing this by hand in your own code, uh, so the system wasn't able to optimize how the data was processed across stages. And this was, let's say, inefficient. This may look like, like a small problem because, well, so here we have like four or five boxes connected together. But very soon in complex use cases, uh, users started to write uh, pipelines, combinations of jobs that they had hundreds of uh, stages. And this was a problem because the data processing systems could not optimize uh, different stages together. So they all each one of the stages, stages was an independent piece that it couldn't be changed in combination with the, with the others. It couldn't be automatically optimized. Despite these limitations, Hadoop was super popular. There were different versions of Hadoop. Um, if anything, the only problem that Hadoop had is that um, it was complex to write these complex pipelines because you had to write lots of different jobs. The code had to be written in Java. It was very verbose for doing relatively simple tasks. You had to write a lot of code. So there were lots of innovations that appear to try to reduce the complexity of Hadoop. For instance, let's mention here a few. Um, here I'm uh, linking to one of the talks about why Hadoop needs a Scala. Uh, this is a talk that uh, mentions a couple of frameworks to simplify the development of Hadoop pipelines. And one of the innovations was switching the language from Java to Scala in order to make the code less verbose. Some companies like Twitter created Scalding also with the same goal to simplify the development of, uh, of pipelines. 
and uh, Hadoop also because the jobs were in a, in a way disconnected uh, between them. Every time you had to connect a job with another one, you had to write the output to one step, and then the next step would take the materialization of that data and would read it. So basically, every time you had to move data from one step to the to another, you had to materialize it in disk in the HD, in the Hadoop file system uh, HDFS or or uh, whatever you were processing data. Materializing data in disk is a slow, really a slow operation. Um, as an innovation, Spark um, um, attempted to reduce the number of times data was materialized, attempted to minimize data materialization in order to speed up things. And it had much better performance than Hadoop in complex pipelines because it, it, it avoided minim materializing data when it could. At Google, there were another system that was very similar to all these systems. So the, at Google, uh, inside Google, there were the same, the same problem. And uh, Fluent Java, for instance, is a, one of the uh, it's a framework that is very similar to one of the frameworks that uh, we we have seen uh, in the previous slide. And it's one of the papers that was mentioned in the in one of the first slides. The um, um, main concept behind uh, Fluent Java was the creation of higher level pipelines that combine together steps. Like for instance, here we're reading from the database, or from, from the file system, doing some filtering, doing some joins, comparing, and then writing one or more outputs, whatever. So you, you could express any complex pipeline as a single object. But at the end of the day, these were all map reduced jobs. Another innovation of Fluent Java it was that before trying to run these map reduce jobs it could also analyze the workflow of data the data flow of a, of data um, throughout the the pipeline and decide to do changes in the physical execution of this pipeline to try to optimize performance for instance typically a naive mapping of this pipeline to map reduce would be what is shown here in the slide each step is a map reduce uh, job but it could be also, for instance, optimized like this. And this minimized also the number of times data was materialized. For instance, so here there are, there are six shuffle, shuffles, um, six uh, reads and six uh, writes, so six materializations of data and six shufflings. Here, where there's only one, mater one shuffling, sorry, not materialization, and two materializations of data, so this pipeline executes much more quickly than this one. So that's an improve of, um, in performance. This is one of the bases of Apache Bean for batch execution. There's another one that is also called Millwheel. Uh, Millwheel was a similar system to the previous ones to execute uh, complex pipelines, but focus on streaming low latency uh, processing and accurate data processing. Back in the days when these systems were created, it was all accepted that the uh, stream processing was going to be always inaccurate. If you remember, for instance, you may have heard of the Lambda architecture where there were a batch pipeline and a streaming pipeline. The batch pipeline was slow but accurate and the streaming pipeline was fast but inaccurate. And then at the end, of the pipelines or of the architecture, you had to reconcile both pipelines um, when data was ready from the batch in order to uh, amend the inaccurate output of the streaming pipeline. These days, this doesn't make sense anymore because Apache Bean unifies the batching and uh, the batch and the streaming processing uh, system. You well, you will see this in other talks uh, in the in the Bing College uh, these days, or you may have probably already heard a very quick introduction about Apache Bean before finishing. So Apache Bean is a multi-language, multi-runner system that unifies a string and batch processing. You may write your pipeline in Java, in Python, Go, SQL, Scala, and other languages. You may all even um, combine different languages uh, in the same pipeline with cross-language transforms. You may use uh, machine learning workloads, and there are lots of transforms now for machine learning, for instance. And then you can run it anywhere that is supported by um, Apache Bean, including Dataflow, Flink, Spark, and all the main data processing systems. 
So this was the his, history of uh, where Apache Bean is coming from. I, ho I hope this was interesting uh, for you. Um, now it's time for you to focus on the future, on, on what Apache Bean is able to, to do, not uh, where it's coming from. Thanks all for your attention. <laughs>